Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Forever Cash Life Real Estate Podcast, where we talk about all things concerning passive cash flow, uh, creating a cash machine, and land flipping, and seller financing, and all those different wonderful techniques around real estate. And today, we're going to talk about the best strategies of direct mail that you can use to make your response rates go through the roof. Stay with me for just a second, and we'll be right back. Welcome to the Forever Cash Life Real Estate Investing Podcast with your hosts, Jack and Michelle Bosch. Together, let's uncover the secrets to building true wealth through real estate and living a purpose-driven life. All right, and here we are again, and I'm super excited to have with me direct mail expert, Jeff Charlton. How are you, Jeff? How are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you doing today? Wonderful. I'm doing excellent. So, um, I know to see you better, I got to put my glasses on here. So, uh, so, so you run a company that if anyone wants to find out more and wants to actually engage, you can go to lpgmailer.com. You're one of our two preferred uh, vendors uh, for direct mail. You do a lot of that stuff for us um, in our land flipping method, which obviously is a direct mail strategy. So, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your company. What do you guys do? What is your specialty? What kind of um, what what do you do best? Uh, we're the, the actual name of my company is Graphic Connections Group, right? And we run several websites uh, for specific niches in in industries. And we we've been doing this. Uh, we're we're in the printing and direct mail business, and have been doing it since 1992. So it's about 28 years, and. Uh, we, although we do any kind of printing and that you use in business, uh, anything you want to put your name on, we specialize in direct mail and specifically direct mail for real estate. I personally am a real estate investor and I've been doing that for about 30 years as well. And I take that knowledge. I sort of fell into doing direct mail for real estate as a result of being a real estate investor, but we've been growing in that niche for about 15 years. And especially the last couple of years, we've really accelerated and we've got a pretty good sized company. We've got about 35 employees, do about six, $7 million in sales. And uh, we, we have thousands of real estate uh, investor customers all around the United States. If I had to say one thing that we're good at, it's helping investors get more leads, which ultimately leads to more deals, which leads to more money, which is what we all want. Exactly. Uh, and if they're successful in getting leads and getting deals, then they will continue to use your services. That's right? correct. So it, it, makes, it makes perfect sense. Um, great. So we use you guys, we work together to send our very simple, what we call the neutral letter out, which I see you have one on your desk there. Hey, right and, here. This uh, is the, uh, that's a simple letter, black and white letter. Right. A simple letter. We sent that out in our simple, uh, simple envelope. So we're kind of probably like your least creative customer out there. But because of the niche that we're operating in, we're obviously getting good response, very good response rates. So, so tell me a little bit about what kind of stuff you guys can do uh, to, to attract the attention of a potential seller. Well, one of, let me first talk about your response rates because uh, the response rates are getting from that mailing are absolutely record setting off the charts response rates. And I don't say that lightly. We're seeing anywhere from five to 10, sometimes upwards of 10% response from individual mailings of that simple letter in a simple white envelope. And when I say record setting, I'm not kidding. That's just absolutely crazy high results. Right. Most real estate investors will get one, maybe 2% on a fantastic day. A lot of them get less than 1% uh, with, with all different types of mailings. And we do all kinds of uh, different things. Uh, this simple letter, he wasn't kidding when he said it was probably the least exciting thing, but you know what? Exciting doesn't necessarily mean results. I mean, what matters is what works, not what's exciting. Right. And I say that all the time, by the way. It doesn't matter what I think or what you think. It matters what the market thinks. And the market tells you what they think by whether they respond or not. And if they're responding, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But Absolutely. you can always improve. Uh, right, right, right. So to answer your question, what can we do to, to improve things? There's all kinds of things we can do. On the most basic level, you can take, right now we put this letter in just a simple number 10 white envelope, basically a business envelope. Um, you could use a fancier envelope like this one right here. This is an envelope we designed. I call it my fake priority mail envelope. And this does usually help to increase response. 
simply because it looks really important in the mail. People are definitely going to open this up. It'll never get mixed up with a bill or anything like that. And we can do little things like do a handwritten font. That's what this one has on. It's got a handwritten font. We put an actual live stamp on it. So, and it's a good handwritten font. So it really does look like somebody sat down and wrote this out by hand. And uh, the objective of the envelope is to get, the, get opened. Right. Uh, so if it gets opened, then somebody will, can, you have a chance to have them read your letter. If it doesn't get open, it gets thrown in the trash. You don't even get a chance to have them read the letter. Right. So that's so, one thing. Yeah. The goal, the goal of the first, the goal of the letter is not to be, is not to get a deal. The goal of the letter is to be opened. Correct. Right? And the goal of the, after it's opened, the goal of the letter is to be read. And then the goal of the letter is to trigger one action, which is the call back. Right? So, so people are like, I'm going to send out the letters. I get those deals. No, first make sure that letter gets open. So one of the things that we do and that uh, apparently students not always use, but uh, what we traditionally have used is we actually upgrade the envelope a little bit more to a cotton or linen envelope. Uh, just because our philosophy, and you can tell me what you think about it. Obviously, it's working, but, uh, but from a point of view of like, we, we've always looked between should we send out the big flashy envelope or should we send out the normal but classy envelope? And we, find, we, we personally have done really well with a classy envelope, but we've never tested the, the, the thing envelope. So perhaps one of these days we need to go send out a couple of thousand with that uh, with a fake uh, express mail or the, the, the one that you just showed and, and just see, compare the response rates between the two of them. I would be curious to find out. And that's an excellent point. I call that an A-B split test. And uh, anytime you are testing something new, the proper way to do that is, like I said earlier, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So you always take what's working. You call that your control. Right. And the control is what's working. And then if you have a new idea, whatever that might be, you test against at the same time with the same list, all the variables are the same except for you take part of that list, you test it with the new, the control. I mean, the, not the, I'm sorry, the control is the control and then the new one is the new one. Right. You test those side by side and you track the results and see which pulls better. But it's very important to only have one variable change at a time. So in this case, you're talking envelopes. So I would use the exact same letter with the same list and just split that list up and have part of the list go to one, Part of the list go to the other at the same time with the same postage and everything and change the envelope and then see which one works better. And right. if the new envelope pulls better, test it again, do it a couple of times. And if, if it consistently pulls better, then that becomes your new control. And then that becomes your standard. And then you come up with another idea, test against that. And you keep doing that. And that's how you optimize to get the best possible results over time. That's exactly um, right. And that's exactly what we've done. We have done it with a letter, though. The reason why we get such a big response rate is that our letters are being opened, but then the letter itself has been every single word almost or every half sentence has been A-B split tested multiple times until we got, got to that letter. Well, I have to admit that we haven't done that much split testing on the envelope because it's most more like a philosophical decision. We want to stay the almost like attorney-like looking letter, which is against what everyone else sends. But, uh, but we are very curious to, to test it perhaps the other way. I just don't know. I mean, there's different envelopes too. I've got one in my hand here. This is a kind of a brown craft personal and confidential envelope. Looks very important. People open this too. Now, this isn't flashy. This is more business-like, mm -hmm. but it definitely gets opened. Another choice is a, this is an invitation envelope, which is kind of along the lines of what you're talking about, kind of a, now this is not a fancier paper, but it is on a cream colored stock. It's an invitation size. So it's something very personal. People are going to open this too. They're definitely not going to throw this in the trash without opening it. And you can put a personal font on there, a handwritten font, or you can do a typewritten business font, whatever you want. Um, there's all kinds of things you can do. Um, yeah. So, so by the way, uh, just quickly, if I may throw in, if you're listening to this on iTunes, because we're both doing this on video and on, on audio, I would encourage you um, listen listen to the episode. But if you want to see exactly what we're talking about, uh, head over to YouTube and search for the Land Profit Generator with Jack and Michelle Bosch. That's our channel over there. Subscribe to it. Check it out. And you'll find the same episode that you're listening to right now as a video. And you can, you can fast forward and so go exactly to the point where we actually are showing that. If you're already watching it on YouTube, good job. Let's keep going then. So, uh, well, By the way, all these envelopes on. I mentioned, that, that, that link you mentioned earlier to go to the website, those are all shown on our website 
to uh, that you can pick as a choice when you order your your direct mail piece. It allows you to choose the letter and then also choose the envelope. We have about ten different choices of envelopes you can pick from. Okay, wonderful. That's great. So so you go there, check it out, and then here's always what I say to beginning investors: at the beginning, just follow our best practices. Our white envelope with the letter gets a five to ten, sometimes even fifteen percent response rate, which, as you heard, is uh, from exper from somebody who has done this for twenty, thirty years. Says uh, lots of experience. You even wrote a book about it. It's off the charts. Use that, and once you have done a few deals, then go ahead and and split test. If you have already done a bunch of deals. Go contact Jeff and his team uh, under uh, lpgmailer.com and then go and, and, and utilize some of their creativity to see if you can't push that even, even higher. You absolutely got my full permission to do that and I encourage you to do that. Now, having said that, let's quickly ask, like, what are some of the craziest things that people have asked you to send out? Uh, well, I guess if you go to the crazy end of the spectrum, lumpy mail is... Uh, I would consider that that's a crazy category. Lumpy, what lumpy mail is, is mail that has something, has a lump in it, basically. It's something right. dimensional, more than just a flat envelope or a flat postcard. Um, we've sent out, in fact, a watermelon. If I had to go the craziest thing ever, it's we mail the watermelon. Okay. <laughs> so One literally, or like a hundred of them. Actual watermelon. Yeah. Well, we mailed a hundred of them for a guy. Oh, and wow. you can't do that anymore. The post office won a lot. This goes back about 20 years ago. But we actually mailed watermelons to people and that guy there's a post office somewhere in an island hawaii or so where you can probably where you can mail coconuts though. you can yeah they they have that because i've done that actually i went to hawaii and we did that we mailed it home and i don't think they allow that anymore though uh, at least not through regular standard mail there's a way you can do it but you have to put it in a box you can't just right, mail it right, right, raw yeah. thing but that that watermelon thing literally got a hundred percent response oh i'm sure hundred out did. of a hundred because it was so crazy that people had to call you Right. Now, that was a very unique situation that has nothing to do with real estate, but it was crazy. Uh, another one that I mailed that I think is a very effective mailer. In fact, I can show you um, this. It doesn't work anymore, but this is a, um, a video mailer. And I'm working on something right now like this is a generic product for real estate. But this one doesn't work because the battery's dead. But it's like it's a kind of a it goes in an envelope when you mail it. But when you open it, it's got dimension to it. It's thick. And when you open this flap, there's a little screen here that plays a video. And when you, the minute when you open it, it starts playing. Very effective mail piece. Now, it's expensive, but right. I consider this lumpy mail too. But how much does that, something like that cost? Well, something like this, depending on how much it costs to produce your video, to, to, to print and mail this, it's probably about 20 to 30 bucks per unit. Okay. So you don't mail this to 5,000 people. What you do is you pick this. Well, in fact, I'll give you an example. I, I joined a mastermind many years ago. And where we came up with the idea, the guy that put on the mastermind sent out 100 of these to 100 people he thought would be good for the mastermind. And at the time, it cost him, he, he FedExed them, so it cost him 40 bucks per unit to mail it out. So he spent $4,000, but he was asking $10,000 for that mastermind. And out of one mailing, he spent $4,000 and he got 25 people to pony up $10,000 each. So he brought in $250,000 from one four thousand dollar investment oh wow that's, that's, that's the a good single return. best mailing i've ever been involved with my whole career right. was that dan kennedy's was, was that dan kennedy's direct mail mastermind uh well and i can't really say who it was but it was but dan kennedy is my one of my favorite guys i i follow him in fact i'm in dan kennedy's he's got a brick and mortar mastermind i'm in that group all right so yeah, yeah dan kennedy yeah. is great i've been following him for my whole career yeah, for well, anyone who wants I, to generally know more about direct mail, there, there's the master of masters. There's a guy named the name of Dan Kennedy. Um, there was rumors that he had passed away, but he might have not. I'm not entirely sure. He did not. Uh, that's an amazing story, too. He literally was on his deathbed with days to live. He wrote his own death Eulogy. notice. I, I read it, yes. And sent it out. Because I, I was his mastermind. We were one of the first ones to get that. We were shocked because we had been with him two weeks before that, and he was, not, he was fine. But he got some kind of infection and he got sick really fast, thought he was going to die. He was in hospice and he didn't die. And now he's okay. He's out of hospice. He's not completely healed, but he's back to working again. So okay. it's well, that's wonderful to hear because yes. the entire industry was mourning there because this is yes. one of the, uh, the icons of the industry for direct mail. So if, uh, if someone wants to know more about direct mail, go check out, is it Glazer Kennedy or so? Right, uh, gkic.com is his company. That's uh, gkic, 
there. It's called Glazer Kennedy. Okay, I see that com. Check it out. Their subscriptions are thing. I subscribed to their stuff for a while ago, but it was so much and so thing that it's just like, no, our letter is working and our letter gets 15% response rates. That's better than anyone else ever. So let's stick to this. So, uh, so great. Generally, generally speaking, uh, the make the a general rule in direct mail is the more personal you can make something, the better your response you're going to get. That's really a basic concept. So we're always striving to come up with ways to make things personal, to not make them look uh, like it's junk mail or a bill or something like that. Now there are other philosophies. I can tell you there are also philosophies at the other end of the spectrum where people make it look like a marketing promotion right out of the gate. Uh, I'm not saying that doesn't work, but generally speaking for re the real estate niche, the more personal, the better. Right. So, so going on that, let's have a quick philosophical discussion on that. So, so I always struggled with this concept because if I get something that kind of looks mass mail-y, then I'm not, no matter how personal it is, I'm not going to take that as seriously as if I'm getting something that looks like really beautiful, proper, not beautiful, but proper official. That's why when we said, like when we said, when we started our land flipping, we said like, how do we want to look to our customers? Do we want to look to our customers as, as somebody just blankets the market? Or do we want to look to our customers as like almost like the most, like a reliable, solid financial company that's willing to buy their property and is actually going to follow through? And we chose the other path and that has worked extremely well with that. What do you think about these two kind of extreme th thoughts? And be honest. Uh, uh, it, my response is different people respond to different things. That's my response. That is very true. Um, and in direct mail, in this real estate market, I'm sure you've heard of yellow letters because yes. people have been using yellow letters for years. Yes. And they're basically, uh, it looks like a yellow, I don't have an example in front of me, but it's, it looks like somebody wrote a handwritten note on a yellow pad of paper and they stuck it in some junky envelope and they put a stamp on it and they mailed it. Me, I would never respond to anything like that uh, because to me that looks like some schmuck that doesn't know what he's doing and is unprofessional. However, in this space, that works really well. A lot of people do that, but not everybody, okay? <laughs> because there are people that are at the opposite end that respond to only professional looking things. So my response is a proper marketing campaign, if you really want to dial in, is to mail different things as part of a campaign. What we teach people is buy a list of however many names you want to go after and mail that same list multiple times. And we recommend you mail multiple times with different types of mailers to hit the different people on the list that are going to respond to the different types of mailers. So you're doing really well with this, this letter you have. So as I said before, do not change that. But that doesn't mean there's not more people that for whatever reason won't respond. Maybe they think your white envelope looks like a bill or it looks, they're just going to throw that in the trash because it looks like business mail, but they might respond to a personal looking handwritten note, or maybe they respond to a postcard. That's another discussion, which I guess I'll bring in here is postcards versus letters. So postcards in most cases look like a commercial piece of junk mail because it's got color and graphics and, Clearly, usually postcards are junk mail. In fact, here's some of the postcards we do. Now, these are large ones. I happen to believe in large postcards because they stand out more in the mail. But this is clearly a marketing piece of mail. You're not kidding anybody. Right. Not kidding anybody that you sat down and colored that thing, all right? But that doesn't mean they won't respond to it. And the beauty of this is when, they, when they're going through their pile of mail, which everybody does, you go to the mailbox, you get a pile of mail, and you start flipping through it. Well, you got one to two seconds while somebody's flipping through it to decide if they want to keep that piece of mail or throw it in the trash. So if that marketing piece, even if it looks like it's colorful, has the right headline or the right message to get their attention, they might just put that aside in the pile they want to look at later instead of throwing it away. Yeah, there's no way to make, our, make, uh, make postcards not look like mass mail, but at the same time, you can't throw them away without at least looking at them. Well, I would disagree with that, actually. There is a way. Okay. And I don't have it right here. However, it's a handwritten, we do this. It's a handwritten postcard that does not have an addition. It has a stamp on it. If you think okay. about it, if your Aunt Martha sat down and wrote you a note on a postcard, some people do this. There are people that write notes on postcards and send them. 
You ever get a postcard when you're on vacation from somebody yeah. that writes you a note from vacation? That's a handwritten postcard. Yeah, my, my daughter like does that. that. Every vacation, like she, sends, she sends grandma, grandma, grandpa in Germany uh, a, a handwritten postcard. Yes. Yeah, and those do not look like junk mail. They're, that's somebody that wrote you a postcard. So we do postcards that look like that. Now, they're not vacation postcards, but it looks like a, 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 no, a handwritten note on a postcard. We put a stamp on it. And we mail that and it actually looks handwritten. So that's the one exception where it doesn't look like junk mail. But you have to put the stamp on. Now, there, there's little nuances to this. There's a lot of people in the market, our competitors, that will do what appears to be handwritten postcards, but then they put an indicia on it. Like here's an indicia is the little square box that's pre-printed on there with the postage. Well, the minute you put that on there, it turns into junk mail. Right. Because clearly Aunt Martha is not going to have their own postal indicia. Okay. Yes. She's going to put a stamp on there. So that's what we try to do is we try to make personal look really personal. How is that going to happen? If it's a handwritten piece, we use stamps. If it's a commercialized glossy piece, you don't need stamps. But then we try to look for what are things that are going to get people's attention. So there's another one of those things. I'm, I am the guy that invented the Street View mailers about two years ago. Okay. This picture is a picture of the house from Google. And if you have land, we by the way, we haven't tried this, but we have – Skyview mailers too. So if you're selling land or looking to buy land, we can do a sky view from Google of that land parcel and print that on a postcard or a letter. Nice. So you can say, hey, is this your land? Okay. I want to buy it or, or whatever, however you want, whatever wording you want. So we can do that dynamically through a program we wrote. We can literally take your mailing list, upload to this program we wrote, download all, all those images from Google, and we can print those on anything you want to print them on. So All that's right. a way to take a commercial. This is clearly a commercial piece of junk mail, but because it's a picture of their house, hopefully when they're flipping through the mail, you got that one to two seconds, they'll stop and say, Hey, that's my house. Mm -hmm. I think get a picture of my house, whatever you hope right. that they'll say, even you if might get some angry them, calls then. What do you do? do actually <laughs> you do. Okay. <laughs> You'll get a handful of angry calls, but I always say, who cares about that? That guy's right. absolutely, you, know? you got to have Although, a thick skin. Although some of the best deals come from angry callers. So that's a different discussion, but you can flip those angry people into people that are, that are actual deals. If you know how to do it. Right. Because angry people are emotional people and emotional yes. people can go, the emotion can go the other way around very quickly. Yes. Um, very cool. So I love this because as you, as you see here, if you have not been involved with this real estate much at all, you just saw a treasure trove of different different possibilities that you do that. And so my, 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 my takeaway from that is that never believe anyone to say, this is the only way to do something. Because it's like, we don't even say that. We just say, this less simple letter has worked extremely well for us, continues to work extremely well for us. So don't discard it for something else. Instead, do what Jeff said earlier. If you really want to try to improve it, do what's called a split test, an A-B split test. Take your list, take a couple thousand people or so, send a thousand with the letter, a thousand with version one of, a, of any one of these that are on the table here, and then go see how it does. And then, and then here's not another measurement thing. Don't just measure response rates, measure the actual amount of deals and measure the actual amount of money ultimately that you make, or at least the number of deals that you get, because, uh, and also measure the cost of it. Because if you get the same amount of deals or if you get a couple more, uh, if, if this costs a tremendous, one thing like some of these video mailers end up costing thousands of dollars more, but they only marginally improve their results, then you would be easy to say, oh, they, the results are better, let's use this. But if your net is lower, it's still better to use the other one. All right? Right. So, so in other words, chances are it's not going to be close. It's going to be either better or not better. But, but make sure that you don't just look at one factor, but track multiple things along the way. Because at the end of the day, you want to, we want to make sure that, that you're fine. What's, what the bottom line is, is not whether you use the white letter or the envelope or thing. What, at the end of the day, is to make sure that for the same amount of dollars, you get more, you get more revenue, more income per dollar spent on marketing. That's the ultimate number. Now, yeah, do you help your customers yeah. with, with any of these measurements? It's a return on investment, which you're talking about, and that's very important yes. to measure. Um, yes, well, we can only help so far. One recommendation I have. Well, you can only help so far because once the mailers come back, you, but yeah. Yeah, well, what I was going to get at is when you're tracking, it's very important to actually track. And the easiest way to track is to get a call tracking phone number. 
Uh, and call rail is one service it has that there are other services too. But what a call tracking phone number is simply a phone number you get that forwards your own phone number. It's just an intermediary phone number that there's a computer system that tracks that call came in. And it can also record the call. So if you ever, if you have people working for you that are maybe working the phones or whatever, you can actually listen to what they say to make sure they're handling it properly. But the most important part of that is it tracks it. So you know, when the calls come in, you can then look at a report either daily or weekly or monthly to say, let's say we're doing this A-B split test, get two different phone numbers, one for each one, and you track it. And at the end, say, go, let a couple of weeks go by, you can actually look and say, oh, I got 25 phone calls from this one and 45 phone calls from this one. So this one pulled better. And then what you are saying earlier is take it to the next level and see how many actual deals you get out of it to see if there's a difference in the lead quality from one mailer to the other. Because there a lot of times there is a difference in lead quality. Some yeah. things will get you more leads, but you get more tire kickers out of it. Uh, other things will, may not get you as many leads, but they're more qualified leads. So right. there's so many variables, but you'll never know if you don't track it. And the one, one thing, if I look at the, the biggest mistake most of our customers make is they don't track. We see this all the time. So when you ask, do I help you track? I, I, the only thing I can do is tell you, you need to get a tracking phone number, but it's on you to do that. I mean, you can manually track it, but it, almost nobody can do that effectively because you get sidetracked and you, before you know it, you know, you're, you just, you answer the phone, you forget to write it down. But the good thing about a tracking number is you don't have to write anything down. It automatically tracks it for you and then you know, and you don't miss any calls or anything. Any, you know? any uh, tracking numbers? You mentioned one of the places there. Any other tracking systems that you know that you can recommend? Uh, I don't know, but I just, I, I, I have to say call rail. I use call rail myself and I think it's an outstanding system and it's really inexpensive. It's, I think their minimum rate is like 30 or 40 bucks a month and you get five tracking numbers for that. And that's all I need. But we do that. Everything we, we ever mail for ourselves, we always use a tracking number because it's just by far the easiest way to do it. And then if you do emails and things like that, here's another piece of advice, by the way, too. We do not ever recommend using a website landing page on a direct mail piece. Um, phone numbers are much better. Or texting. Texting is another option we have, too. Because the problem with landing pages are people may have good intentions to go do it, but they somewhere between getting the mail piece and going to the landing page, they may not do it. Mm -hmm. And you may lose that lead when you would have had it if there's a phone number and they can call right away. So, so we have both actually on ours. We have a phone number, but then for convenience, if you rather would go there, go there. And uh, we still, I mean, that we track that. And we have had this thing on there since 2005, I believe, and I believe, or 2004 for that matter. And uh, we still to this day don't get more than 15 to 20% of people go to that, to that page. Most That's people because you have call. the phone number because yes. they call first. The mistake people make though, I, mean, I was not clear, a lot of people don't want to take all these phone calls. So they say, or they want to pre-qualify the leads first. So they send them to a landing page to ask them some questions or something. If you put a landing page instead of a phone number, you'll absolutely destroy your response rate it, because you'll just lose all kinds of leads because people won't, they'll either forget to do it or when they go and they find out they got to go through some work. They don't want to do it. So they, or maybe they don't want, they think, Oh, this guy's going to email me a bunch of times. I don't want that. There's all kinds of negatives that can happen with the landing page if that's all you have. So always, always have a phone number as an option. If you want to have other options, that's okay. Yes, absolutely. Very good. So, um, so that's awesome stuff. I mean, I really love that. There's lots of wisdom in here, lots of knowledge in there. I think we're running up against the end of our episode here. So... Uh, again, uh, for, uh, to check out how they work, to go there, we have set up a combined website because obviously we use them uh, ourselves, our, our students use them, or one of our two endorsed uh, um, mailing companies, and you guys have actually much bigger and better capabilities than the other companies. So you just go to lpgmailer.com, L-P-G-M-A-I-L-E-R.com, and again, your company name is, is, is Graphic Connections Group, right? Um, yeah, so let me say one more thing. Uh, sure. The main rep that, that uh, works with, with this group is Ryan Dixon, uh, and uh, he'd love to talk to you. One of the things we do that's different than our competition is we, have, we handhold you through the whole process. So when you go to the website, you, you'll be able to contact us, or you can order online as well, but we will handhold you through the process. So if you don't understand what to do or you don't know how to get your mailing list or whatever, all that stuff will make sure that you completely understand and 
you know, whatever you want to do will help you with it. We help with live people. I'm kind of old fashioned when it comes to that. I believe in live people. We answer the phone with live people. Computers don't answer the phone. And uh, we, we literally hold people's hands through the entire process and make sure that we really can ha- lead you to a successful outcome, which means more leads and more deals. Wonderful. That's great to have. So with that said, uh, thank you very much, Jeff, for being on the, uh, on the, on the podcast with us. That was really enlightening. Um, again, the, the thing I take from it is there's no one, one way. There's different people. I love what you said about there's different people respond to different kind of mailing, uh, mailing things. So I think we even need to go in and jump in and, and perhaps split test some other, some additional variations. And even though one letter We'll send one time with our land profit generator met- method already leads you to a uh, successful uh, to five to fifteen percent response rates. Uh, you, I, I, I don't doubt that absolutely, and absolutely believe that sending this a couple three times can even boost that even more into 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 the stratosphere of like twenty twenty five percent response rates, which would be pretty insane. But uh, but that subject, that's part of why land is so beautiful and so profitable. So with that said, thank you very much. Uh, really enjoyed it. Thank you for having, uh, for, thank you for being on the show with us. I appreciate the invite. Thanks a lot. Right. And with that, that's a wrap. That concludes our episode of the Forever Cash Live Real Estate Podcast. As always, make sure you watch it on YouTube, uh, particularly if you want to see the different pieces that we, that we have shown into the camera, if you listen to it on, on iTunes so far, but also listen to it on iTunes, subscribe to it, give us the five-star reviews, share it with your friends so we can reach more people about cash and cash flow through real estate and land flipping. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Enjoyed this episode? Then make sure you like, subscribe, and post your comments and questions below the video. We're looking forward to hearing from you.